a set of final mission analysis carried out by ELV and Avio, the launch vehicle Prime, and endorsed by the European Space Agency, the ultimate Vega qualification. So some really important teamwork there between a range of different agencies and organisations. Congratulations to all those teams for getting us to here today. Uh, they've been working for about uh, seven weeks here on the base to prepare not only the satellites but the launcher. We call it the launch campaign. Let's find out what they've been doing. Launch of Offset 3000 Venus. There you go. <laughs> VV-10 is the Vega third dual launch after the second and seventh launches. The two passengers, Optat 3000 and Venus, were built by the same manufacturer, IAI, based in Israel. The satellites arrived in the same Boeing 747, June 21, and transferred in the S-1B North and South clean rooms. After the electrical and fluid health checks, followed by the solar array deployment test, Venus was transferred June 29 in the S2B filling hall for the tank fueling with hydrazine. Before fueling, Venus was assembled to the separation system named SIR, a dedicated customer operation. Venus, a mono ergol satellite, was fueled and pressurized July 4 and 5. Opsat 3000, after health checks identical to Venus, was transferred to S3B July 6 for the fueling with hydrazine with the same fueling car than co-passenger. The July 5 review gave a go for the beginning of combined operations with launcher. On the launcher side, the launch campaign began on a standard 36 days duration with PAT transfer on June 14. Venus, Venus, on its adapter, was integrated on the P2 plate, July 6, and mated on the internal Vespa cone, the day after. The encapsulation on Vespa upper part was done July 10, ending the Venus integration operations. The assembly of co-passenger OPSAT 3000 on Vespa occurred on July 13. The 17 July, the COAF the new generation ferry in July 17 covered Vespa and satellites. This new part, called PAC, was transferred on the launch zone July 19 and integrated the day after on the launcher, ending all satellites' mechanical operations. During the first phases of flight, the solid booster stages P80, Zephyro 23 and Zephyro 9 will be tracked by the telemetric ground station Galio over a duration of 7 minutes. Due to safety aspects, these three stages will re-enter in the seas. The last stage, integrating a liquid engine named AVUM, will reach transfer orbit after a first boost duration of 6 minutes. This boost will be tracked by Bermuda and Canadian Saint-Hubert ground stations. In order to make the first SSO orbit circular, a shorter second boost of 2 minutes will occur under South Korean Jeju station visibility after a long intermediate ballistic phase of 26 minutes. Once the targeted orbit reach, OPSAT 3000 will be released. For the second part of the mission, the upper composite of the carrying structure named VESPA will be separated and a third avum boost will occur under Australian Nunarcia station during one minute in order to start the target 720 km SSO altitude. After one Earth rotation, a fourth avum boost will be foreseen over a duration of one minute and ground tracked by Galio. Venus will be then released after 97 minutes of flight. So there you have it. That's what you can expect to be seeing over the next hour and a half. À tous de DDO, attention pour la séquence finale lanceur. Top H0-4 minutes. There we go. He has announced the beginning of the synchronized sequence, the last four minutes in the yeah, final phase sense. of the countdown. As I was saying, that um, I've now popped up to the commentary box, which is in the Mission Control Center, and I shall be here for the rest of the program. These are the status panels. I'll translate them for you. Uh, autorisation lancement is the launch authorization. ETA base is the, the base or the range, logistics, uh, safeguard is safety, 
measure measurements. Telemesure is telemetry. Localization is radar. Uh, telecom speaks for itself. Ensemble de lancement is the launch zone. Then we have Vega and the satellites. And Meteo, of course, is weather. So the final countdown started uh, nine hours and yeah, ten yeah. minutes before launch. 5,040 minutes ago, activation of the telemetry, then an hour later, activation of onboard, the onboard computer, loading of the flight program. The mobile gantry was removed 3 hours and 15 before launch, and then 50 minutes before the launcher system was ready, and uh, just uh, under eight minutes ago, we got the all clear in terms of the weather. Looking good out there. It's actually been rather sunny these last few days. We are heading towards the dry season now here in French Guiana after having had a long, wet and rainy season. Greetings if you are joining us and an extra special welcome to all the teams at Israel's Ministry of Science and Technology and the Israel Space Agency who are watching the launch from the Israel Aerospace Industry Headquarters in Tel Aviv who designed and built OPSAT 3000 and Venus. And a very big welcome to all you folk watching us in Italy at the Ministry of Defence Telespazio and OHB Italia, and of course to everybody watching us on the internet. This is the Vega launch zone, SLV, site de lancement Vega. Interestingly, it was built on the first Ariane launch pad, Ariane 1. À tous de DDO, attention pour au moins une minute. Top H0, moins une minute. We are one minute to launch. Our very best wishes to all the teams, to the OPSAT 3000 and Venus teams, to Arian Space's customers and the industrial consortia led by Telespazio and Israel's Ministry of Science and Technology. And of course to all the teams on the ground waiting to take over the satellites. Let's sit back now and watch the launch. Two minus thirty. By the way, Vega is going to go up. It's going to leave the ground fairly quickly. It has a pretty good thrust to weight ratio. A tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage P80, décollage. La propulsion est nominale. Par notre bord sont normaux. Le pilotage est calme. What an amazing sight. Par notre bord sont normaux. Vega blazing a trail across the night skies here above the Guiana Space Center heading out north and we can hear the rumble coming across here now at the Space Center we broke the sound barrier 31 seconds 31 seconds after launch when we reached Mach 1 Getting some great views tonight. He's telling us that everything's going normally. 
think I can see the state starting to burn out. Début de la queue de poussée du P80. Yeah, I think that was burnout. We're burning the P80, the first stage. Séparation du P80. Yep. And it has burnt all Allumage its propellant. Zephyro 23. We don't need any any more. It falls away. And we are shedding weight. The lighter we are, the faster we go. And we're now burning the Z23. It's the second stage. It burns for about one minute and 40. And Z stands for Zephyro, which is an Italian type of wind. See what I mean? There's quite a bit of separation. 23 because it burns 23 tons of solid propellant. Look at the bottom left-hand side of the screen, our altitude, we're 100 kilometers above sea level. And that means that we are now basically going into space. We've reached what's called the Kármán line, the border between our atmosphere and outer space, the point where the atmosphere becomes so thin that it can no longer support Aeroplanes with wings, and so we have to use rocketry to stay up. The way the lens works is it was named line. after the Hungarian American aerospace engineer Theodore von Karman, often known as the father of supersonic flight. Tous les paramètres bord sont nominaux. He was born in 1881 and died in the 1960s, and he was a director of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Okay, we have now lost the Z-23, and we're waiting for the next stage to switch on. That's called the Z-9. Let's make the fairing one separate first. I think they might coast a bit because of how high, relatively speaking. Here we go, the scheduled moment for the ignition of that engine. And then we'll shortly get the separation of the fairing. There it goes. So we don't need the fairing anymore because we are very outside the uh, atmosphere now, which is very thin, so there's no friction. We can see our satellites for the first time. Vega was built by the Italian company Avio. We are now close to the 10th launch of Vega, the second of 2017. Vega has set a world record in terms of reliability and orbital injection accuracy, with nine perfect launches in a row from the maiden flight in 2012, exactly five years ago. Vega, as operated by Ariane Space, has demonstrated a unique ability to deploy multiple satellites in multiple orbital planes. Today, I'm speaking to you from our plant in Colleferro, where we produce both Vega and we are developing Vega C, which will fly for the first time in 2019. Behind me, you see the new testing facility where we already successfully tested the first booster case of the new P120C solid rocket motor, which will equip both Vega C and Ariane 6. Today, Vega will take two satellites into sun synchronous orbit OPSAT 3000, an Earth observation satellite for the Italian Ministry of Defense, and Venus, another Earth observation satellite for CNES and ISA, which will control vegetation and environment. The two satellites will be hosted on the Vega Secondary Payload Adapter, VESPA. OPSAT 3000 in the upper position and Venus in the inner one. The Avio team, together with its industrial partners and with Ariana Space and ESA, is pleased to have once more a chance to demonstrate the strength of Europe's space strategy, which hinges around collaboration and teaming. I therefore wish the best success to the 10th mission of Vega. And as we heard there, the two first Vega contracts were signed in June at the Paris Air Show. 
Airbus Defence and Space's upcoming constellation of observation satellites will fly on the new version of Vega, Vega C, and also Prisma, which is an Earth observation satellite for the Italian Space Agency. So the third stage has now switched off its engine and the main propulsion phase of the flight is now over. Début du boost d'éloignement. Our flight path takes us north up over the Caribbean along the east coast of the US. la télémesure lanceur par la station des Bermudes and Canada, and uh, we can hear there that we have acquisition of the signal at the Bermuda tracking station. And uh, up over Newfoundland and Labrador and to the west of Greenland over the Baffin Sea, then we cross the Arctic, come back down across Siberia, and then we start Début heading south. Début de la première manoeuvre d'orientation avant le premier boost de la voûte getting ready to switch on the Avum upper stage. And then we'll be separating our first satellite over Japan and then heading south again, back up north towards South America and uh, Ecuador, Colombia, de la where we will switch on our, separate our second satellite. So we have now switched on the Avum upper stage. That's going to burn for about six and a half minutes. And the next next uh, part of the flight has now started because uh, the Avum or Avum upper stage has taken the wheel. Its job is to... And everything's going normally. Its job is to deliver the satellites to their drop-off points in space. So the first one to be released is OBSAT 3000. La capacità di vedere, poter guardare dall'alto, è essenziale per moltissime attività, per la difesa in modo particolare. Potendo mettere insieme le capacità di visione radaristica di Cosmo SkyMed, un ottimo prodotto voluto dalla difesa che la nostra industria ha sviluppato in modo eccellente, con la capacità invece ottica che abbiamo acquisito in un rapporto con Israele di cui siamo molto soddisfatti potendo mettere insieme queste due visioni quindi la visione radaristica e quella ottica per avere uno sguardo sempre più preciso dicevo è un bisogno che ha la difesa ma è ovvio che questa necessità è di molte altre amministrazioni dello Stato o di molti altri enti e ovviamente queste nostre capacità noi le mettiamo a disposizione e quindi un progetto che è nato per la difesa è un progetto oggi profondamente duale che può essere utilizzato da tutti coloro che ne hanno bisogno. Ed è un progetto anche europeo, ne abbiamo giusto parlato anche recentemente con la mia collega francese, ma con l'idea di svilupparlo a livello europeo, noi stiamo già collaborando con la Francia proprio per quanto riguarda la capacità ottica, quindi si inserisce in un percorso di costruzione di difesa europea immaginando di mettere insieme queste capacità. Ma oggi permettetemi di ricordare che stiamo parlando anche di eccellenze industriali italiane, con telespazio e con il lanciatore Vega di Avio. Una un lanciatore eccellente, quasi completamente di tecnologie italiane, sono andato anche a visitare diciamo, dove viene costruito e quindi abbiamo in qualche modo un progetto tutto italiano che verrà lanciato a Kourou, come sapete, ma di cui siamo soddisfatti perché è un progetto al servizio della nostra sicurezza e della nostra comunità. top right hand side of the screen is our trajectory, the planned path for the vehicle, and the cross is the actual position of Acquisition the vehicle. We picked up the signal at the Saint Hubert tracking station, that's in Quebec in Canada, just outside Montreal. Our second satellite to be separated is Venus.
We are very proud to be here for the launch of OPSAT 3000. That is a very important milestone for Leonardo and Telespazio. OPSAT 3000 is a space mission of the Italian Ministry of Defense based on a remote sensing satellite equipped with an high resolution optical sensor for defense use. Telespazio is the prime contractor and manages the entire mission, including the procurement of the satellite, the realization of the overall ground segment, and the supply of integrated logistics and operational activities. The OPSAT 3000 system is designed to guarantee very high service performance, combining the high resolution optical technology on board and the on ground system's data acquisition and processing capability. The satellite, provided by the Israel Aerospace Industries company, is designed to have a low weight, high autonomy, remarkable agility, low consumption, and high reliability. The launch of OPSA 3000 through a Vega launcher produced by Avio is a great satisfaction for all of us in the Italian space industry, mostly thanks to the support of the Italian Space Agency. OPSA 3000 will be able to interoperate with the second generation Cosmos SkyMed system to provide to the customer an integrated wide range of products, radar and optical. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Italian Ministry of Defense for the spirit of the extreme cooperation they have expressed in this project, as well as the industrial team that has delivered its competence and commitments. Let me mention in particular the very good relationship of cooperation that has been established with the Israeli colleagues. Cross finger for a successful mission. That's on you, Indeed. And uh, there we are, be being tracked by the Saint Hubert, Saint Hubert tracking station. The Avum upper stage is powering us higher and higher into space. If you look at the bottom left, our altitude. In the middle, our distance is from the pad. If you were to draw a straight line along the Earth from the pad to the position underneath the launcher, and on the bottom right is the speed. Extinction de la Voom. So the Avum upper stage has switched its engine off and we are now entering the first ballistic. Uh, beginning of an orientation there be uh, for the ballistic phase. Ballistic means without propulsion. And that means that we are traveling high enough and fast enough to cruise without the engine. This is the first of two ballistic phases or coast phases during this launch. This one's going to last about uh, 26 minutes. Our program is going to come to you in three parts tonight to cater for Belle those de la ballistic phases. Et début du mo mode barbecue. So he's yeah. just announced the beginning barbecue of the well. barbecue rotation, which means that we are now slowly rotating to maintain the temperatures. You can imagine that on one side it can get very hot when you're facing the sun and on the other side very cold so we have to maintain homogeneity so our first part was following the launch our second part will be focusing on our first passenger to be released OPSAT 3000 we'll be finding out more about that and then in part three we'll be concentrating on our second passenger, Venus. So we're going to take a break and come back to you in about sort of 12 minutes or so. Uh, the commentary will restart at 11.27 p.m. Kuru time. That's uh, Greenwich Mean Time is 2.27. In France and Italy, that's 4.27 and 5.27 a.m. in Israel. We'll leave you with a replay. Little pause the video here, see once the webcast one of them to resumes. Part two of our live coverage here from the Guiana Space Center.
the tenth Vega to lift off from the pad here. Lift it off 29 minutes ago. We are orbiting two satellites tonight for the French, Italians and Israelis. They are OPSAT 3000 and Venus to Earth observation satellites. OPSAT 3000 for the Italian Ministry of Defense and Venus for the Israel and French space agencies. They lifted off from the pad just under half an hour ago here at the Guiana Space Center on board the smallest launcher of the Ariane space family. In part one, we followed the launch up until the switching off of the Avum upper stage or Avum. It's often pronounced in French. And there you can see what's left of the launcher, the Avum. It's actually rotating. It's in a barbecue phase, rotating as if on a spit in order to keep the temperatures even all the way round. It may look like uh, it's traveling very slowly, but it's not. It's traveling extremely fast. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you can see there on the bottom right hand side that we are traveling at 7.7 .7 kilometers per second. Ladies and gentlemen, per second, not per hour. Or per minute. teams here in the Mission Control Center, fondly known here as Jupiter, the Jupiter Control Center. We have a number of control centers here in the CSG. The launch control centers are linked to each one of the launch zones, but there's only one Mission Control Center. These are the operational teams behind what we call the fishbowl. The fishbowl is that glass structure there. But you know, like Top right hand side of the screen you can see that we, the early stage of the flight, we were really climbing into space. Now we've flattened out. Our First satellite is OPSAT 3000. OPSAT 3000 is a space mission based on a remote sensing satellite equipped with an high resolution optical camera realized for the Italian Ministry of Defense. The mission was born following an intergovernmental agreement between Italy and Israel. The satellite has low weight and consumption high autonomy and reliability, and remarkable agility and image quality. The ground segment needed to operate the satellite is fully deployed in Italy and includes two satellite control centers, main and backup, and a payload programming and processing center. OPSA 3000 will interoperate with the Cosmos SkyMed second generation system to provide the customer with a wide range of optical and radar products in an integrated manner. Telespazio is the prime contractor and manages the entire mission, including the realization of the overall ground segment and the supply of the integrated logistic support and operation services. Telespazio has procured the satellite from Israeli Aerospace Industry, MDB Space Division, together with some parts of the ground segment. The launch services and the satellite interface adapters with Viga have been in charge to OHB Italia as Telespazio subcontractor. An excellent cooperation has been established with the customer and among all the involved industries, together with the sincere friendships among the various teams. And then I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of them for their outstanding professionality, competences and availability, allowing the achievement of the program objectives.
And we are now in the zone of the tracking station in Jeju, which is an island off South Korea. Okay, when I heard what she said that. Telespazio is an important Italian yeah. company with a huge yeah. amount of experience in space systems. If you look at the bottom left of the screen, you can see that we've reached our target orbit of 455 kilometers. Uh, we are staying consistent there. We're not climbing anymore. You can see on the top right-hand side of the screen, we've plateaued out. 
is also consistent and we have now switched on the engine for a second time this is to circularize our orbit Les parameters so, bord sont normaux our orbit was uh, elliptical which is the shape of an egg or an oval and now we have to make it into a circle so we've got to the right altitude and now we need to circularize the avum is the smart stage it's the clever part of the launcher its job is to deliver the spacecrafts to their specific orbits and it's designed to inject different payloads into different orbits Its engine can switch on and off up to 20 times. Lights are attached using a special adapter. It's called a Vespa. You can see it there. It's that black structure in the middle, which is hiding Venus underneath. So we've got Opsat at the front, Opsat 3000. You can see the gold structure there on the right-hand side. Second extension of l'étage à vous. And we have the second switching off of the Avum engine. So we're now getting close. Début de la manoeuvre d'orientation au profit d'Opsat 3000. To separating Opsat, and he's just told us that we've started the orientation maneuver to get Opsat into exactly the right position to be able to send it off on its journey. We have to orientate it very precisely to set it on the right path. And the manoeuvre d'orientation au fil du satellite OPSAT 3000. All these maneuvers extremely. Separation du satellite OPSAT 3000. Carefully planned, and we have separation of OPSAT 3000 confirmed there. Huge congratulations to the OBSAT 3000 teams. But of course, we still have Venus attached, and we have the next phase of our journey now to start the process. Take Venus to its orbit and start the process of separating it. So, uh, our best wishes to the OBSAT.